Have you ever had something that looks great on the outside, but on the inside, it's actually worthless? There's a variety of things that you can give some examples for that. I've got a couple for you to share, and you might think of more as well. Um, this last week, I had the chance to go on a camp out with John with, the scouts, uh, with his Scouts Patrol. And one of the things that sometimes looks great, but might actually have no value, is a rain fly on your tent. It might look great on the outside, but if it has leaks in it or pinholes in it that you might not be able to see when the rain comes, you are, it, it's practically worthless. It might look fine um, there on the tent on the outside, but, but if it's not whole, if it's not complete, then it can't live into the purpose that is designed for it. Of course, the scripture from Jeremiah points to another example, a pot that has cracks in it, a cistern uh, that has cracks or a well that is broken in some way. Something that's designed to hold water is, can't have any holes in it. Otherwise, it won't be able to accomplish what it is designed to accomplish. What ideas do you have what pictures do you have of items in your life, relationships perhaps, other things that look one way, but perhaps they aren't effective in what you're hoping to actually have them do? This image is one of the ones that Jeremiah uses, and it uh, helps us conclude our series that we've been going over this summer called Profit Margins. We've been taking a closer look at the scriptures in the Old Testament that remind us of the prophets and how they speak to a people and point out possibilities for the future. You remember that a prophet um, doesn't, uh, isn't predicting what the future is, simply laying out for the people what the possibilities are. Over and over in scriptures, we hear that when the people have turned away from living faithful lives, that God raises up a, a prophet to help draw that to attention, to point that, that out for them, and to cast a vision for what might happen in the future if they continue to live unfaithfully. At other times, they cast a vision for what will be possible if the people turn away from uh, their, their own desires and turn again back to God. And there are good things down that path. Now, here's the thing. Whenever a prophet presents a choice to the people, it's not already predicted. It's not already pre-decided how things will go. The people of Israel had the chance to choose. At times, they chose to be faithful. At other times, they chose to turn away. We have that very same choice. At God's invitation, will we choose to follow or will we choose to turn away? So I'd like to take a look back over where we've been over these last several weeks at some of the key images to remind us of how they can make an impact and how they might be useful for us today. But first, we'll begin with Jeremiah's picture, the scripture for today of broken wells or other translations say cracked cisterns or the vessel that is intended to hold water that doesn't actually hold water. Part of what this reminds us and what we see happening in this passage from Jeremiah is that we know that God is on our side. God loves each one of us before we're aware of it, even when we don't deserve it, especially when we don't deserve it. But sometimes we wander away. We get off track. And we talk about that as a sin, as, as turning away from God, as, as being on a path other than what God would have in mind for us. And all of the excitement in our text for today is because the people don't know that they are off track. This isn't anger or wrath. It's just drawing to the attention that, hey, guess what? There's another possibility for you that has more life than you're actually experiencing. The people have wandered off, and the worst part is perhaps that they think that God will bless them for their efforts, that their efforts are a blessing to God instead of recognizing that God's love is a gift for each one of us. They've forgotten to be grateful. All their gratitude has leaked out. Have you ever forgotten to be grateful? I know I have. That's the image that Jeremiah offers for us. We leak. We can't always hold the grace of God, the water of life. We receive it. We fill it up over and over, week by week, but it still somehow finds to leak out of us. And if we don't return to be filled again, then we find ourselves going dry, just like a plant that needs water to survive or a well that is designed to have water that gives life to those that draw from it. We come back to the source because we know that God will offer it for us. Jeremiah reminds us in this text that no one thought to ask about where this water came from in the first place, that all of this goodness that God offered for the people to enjoy, no one thought to wonder where God was in the midst of the busyness of their lives. Where is God in the midst of our lives? 
And are we paying attention? So we've gathered this week to worship and do that very thing, to be filled up on God's presence and to ask where is God in the rest of our lives, in the other hours that fill up the rest of our week, and to be reminded that God is always with us. We are the ones who have wandered off. When we find ourselves distant from God, it's not God who has departed from us. We have distanced ourselves from a relationship with God. We are the ones who've said that we can handle it on our own. We're the ones who have the chance to turn back and ask, God, will you make yourself known because I know you're here for me. And we need to do it again and again because we find that we ourselves are broken wells or cracked cisterns, letting the presence of God leak out from us each day until we are reminded that we need to return, to be filled again with God's grace. I want to go back to the beginning of our series to remember these, uh, remember these images because they are powerful reminders that help us point us direction about how we can be filled and how we find ourselves leaking at times, leaking this grace of God and need to be refilled. You remember very back at the beginning of the summer, we began with the story of Naaman and Elisha. The prophet Elisha didn't even come out when this foreign governor, this general who came to be healed, he didn't even come outside. He sent a servant to give this message, and we remembered that People can speak from the edges. You don't always need to be the center of attention and that we can be a part of God's work on the margins of our society. When you think about your life or our community, who are the leaders who are on the edges and may not need to be in the spotlight, yet still do important work, critical work in God's kingdom? Then we turn to the book of Amos and his powerful visions. First, a vision of a plumb line. You remember this tool that has a string and a weight and it it shows whether a wall or a, 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 a structure is in line. We can see that God holds up a plumb line to our lives as individuals and our lives as a congregation, as Susanna Wesley. And the question that Amos has is, what do you see? When you see the standard that God has in mind for us, straight up and down a path of life and love that leads to life and love for ourselves and others, are we in line? Or how far off do we find ourselves? And the invitation that God always offers us to realign ourselves with God. When you think about your lives, or perhaps our life together as a community, where do we need to be realigned with God's vision for us? Then we looked at Amos' vision of a basket of summer fruit. The beauty that it is, and yet sometimes we look at a basket of fruit, and when we taste it, we find that some of that fruit has gone rotten. Some of it has gone bad, and we remember that with God all things are possible. We don't have to let what looks good, what looks promising on the outside, actually be rotten. We can take action with what God has provided for us to be a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. So my question for you in this is, when are the places or where are the places where you see something that looks good but underneath it may not actually be good where is that in your life or in our lives together we move to the prophet Hosea and Hosea's incredible ask from God to marry a prostitute to marry someone that has a, a practice of sleeping around, of not being faithful, and God offers, remind, invites Hosea to marry Gomer, and we remember that God's love for us is risky. It is a risk for Hosea to marry Gomer, that he, she will be faithful, that they will have a meaningful life together, and yet he does it anyway. When we think about God's love for us, God risks love with us because we are not always faithful. We turn away time and time again, and yet God offers love for us. God takes risks to be in relationship with us, and how are we responding? Then we continued this story of Hosea because indeed his wife has wandered away. We don't know whether she is physically distant, whether she is emotionally distant from Hosea, but we find that there is some separation that has occurred. And this reminder from the prophet Hosea, he is living out the reality that God experiences with us, that there is some distance, that we wander away, that spiritually, emotionally, that we're distant from God at times in our lives. And so I wonder, when you think about your relationship with God today, how close or how far away do you feel to God? And God always searches to reestablish our relationship, no matter how far we may have gone. 
Then we turn to the book of Isaiah, and this reminder that God is tired of us going through the motions. Living a faithful life is not just about showing up on Sunday morning or joining us online. It's about the possibilities that God has to live our lives every day. It's not just about doing particular things with certain sets of people. It's about living a life of love throughout our lives. And so are there places where you feel like you're going through the motions, where we are do doing actions that we think will please God when actually our hearts are somewhere else? We looked again at Isaiah's vision of a vineyard that had everything that it needed. God provided everything that the vines needed to produce good grapes, but sour grapes or rotten grapes were produced instead. We don't always know the outcomes that make what we don't always live into good outcomes for our lives, and yet God has given us more than we need. How is it that this disconnect happens at times, and what kind of fruit are we producing in our lives? All of these prophets remind us that God cares for us, invites us into relationship, and equips us to serve. Sometimes it's easy for us to forget that God knows who we are and that God calls all of us and that God knows you and me and calls us into service in the world. For you see, God has no desire to turn away from us. God has no desire for the tragic consequences that happen when we turn away from God. God is relational, and we have a role in responding to God's relationship with us. In this honoring, this grand vision, this response to God, we find a vision for society being realized where all people have enough to eat, where there's no injustice or classism or racism, where there's no division based on some of the so many barriers that we might place in our lives when we look at other people and when we look at ourselves. But until then, until that happens, until it's fully realized, we have a part to play. God has us to deal with when it comes to living out God's kingdom on earth. We can be a part of it, or we can not be a part of it. And so to avoid this distance, to enable God to continue to see God's kingdom co come on earth, God raises leaders, prophets, spokespeople with enough spiritual depth to see and hear and feel the disturbance in God's voice and the suffering among God's people. We see it in the Old Testament in Elisha and Amos, Hosea and Isaiah and Jeremiah, who have spent time healing, pleading, loving, and weeping for a lost people, a people whose lives have separated them from God. So who are the prophets today? Who are you listening to that invites you into a life of close connection with God, of sharing God's love with everyone? Are they on the margins do you connect with them in the center of our society? How are we responding to the call of the prophets today? Because God is still speaking, most often from the edges, and invites us to live a life of love, one that shares God's love with others. Will you pray with me? God, we know that we continue to live lives that are di distant or different than what you have in mind for us. So we ask that you would help us to align ourselves with your love, to receive your love, to hold it, and then to pour it out into the lives of our neighbors each day. God, thank you for the words, the vision, the efforts of the prophets that help us be a part of your work. We offer ourselves to you and ask that you would use us in your holy name, amen.